This guy is usually seen in the background of pictures, but he's one of the most successful people in the world of pop music. He's written top hits for Britney Spears, The Backstreet Boys, Katy Perry, and so many more. Only two other people have had more songwriting success, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Max Martin is effectively the king of pop music. But what's the secret to his incredible success? One place to look to answer that question might be the data behind the music. Like all good data stories, this one starts by opening Excel. We have a data set with 1,124 rows, 66 columns, and a vast amount of information about music, all compiled with a little help from our friend, Chris. My name is Christopher Dallariva, and I'm a musician. He's also a data journalist. I do like analyzing data. Chris has looked back through the history of music to create his data set. It looks at every number one hit on the Billboard Top 100 charts since 1958. I just added more and more information. The song, the artist, the songwriters, the label it was on, and slowly this data set became humongous. All of Max Martin's number one hits are in here. But with so much data, where do you start? A rare on-camera interview with Martin when he won the Polar Music Prize gave us an idea. If you compare pop songs when you grew up with pop songs written right now, what are the major differences? The intros were usually longer back then. <laughs> Could short intros be one of the keys to Martin's success? First, we put all of his number one songs on a chart, showing the year they charted and length of their introduction. You could point to Baby One More Time by Britney Spears, and then you can point to Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. All in between, there's just hit after hit after hit. 24 of them, to be exact, and their average intro length is just nine seconds. Like his 2010 hit with Pink, Raise Your Glass. It only takes nine seconds to get to this part. Right, right, turn off the lights. Pretty quick. But how does that compare with the hits when Max was young? Let's go back to the future, to 1985, when he was just 14 years old. And The Power of Love by Huey Lewis and the News topped the charts. It's a song that embodies the sound of the 80s. Partly because it was a major player in the trend of hit songs featuring in films. But also because its intro ends here. 21 seconds in. Which also happens to be the average length of the intros for all of the number one hits from the 1980s. That's a lot longer than Max's hits. But it's not only Max who's been finding success with brevity. All told, the average length of a song intro by the 2020s was 48% shorter than in the 1980s. So what's driven this downward trend that Max seems to have been particularly good at exploiting? We wondered whether the changing shape of songs might reflect other changes, like how people listen to them. For decades, pop music was all about the single. But by the 1980s, we were well into the era of the album. Long playing records, and later CDs, were the focus for fans and writers alike. From 2000, digital distribution of music began to take over, with the arrival of iPods and MP3 players. The trend towards shorter intros accelerated with the advent of streaming platforms, like YouTube and Spotify. These brought access to seemingly infinite choice, a renewed focus on individual songs, and, for the hit writers, one pretty compelling reason to cut to the chase. There are financial incentives with streaming. You don't get paid unless your song is played for more than 30 seconds. Songwriters have to get to the point quickly if they want to make a buck. As Max Martin well knows. Let's look at his hit, Can't Stop the Feeling. The catchy vocals hit within seven seconds. I got this feeling. But another drop hits at 25 seconds. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that By 30 seconds, the point at which Max and his team will get paid if the listener stays around. Ooh. 
There's no way you're skipping. Max, we can't stop the feeling that we've uncovered one of your secrets. To top the charts, it pays to be in tune with how your audience is listening. Hi, I'm Caitlin, and I'm a producer here on the film team at The Economist. Our data team at The Economist every week writes stories called graphic detail. They're text pieces that focus on one piece of data, and they visualize and analyze that data to tell important stories. We're keen to showcase more of that journalism here on our YouTube channel. If you click the link, it will take you to all of those graphic detail stories. We'd love you to have a read and let us know what you think about them in the comments below. But in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>